what's up? It's George Fragrance Press, and today we're going to be talking about Tom Ford's Noir. Now, Tom Ford's Noir did very well in my top 10 winter list of 2016, making the number 7 spot. When this first came out in 2012, there was a bit of a mixed reaction. It was rather an odd fragrance. It certainly wasn't as loud and vivacious as, say, Amber Absolute or uh, Tuscan Leather or Italian Cypress. Am I the only one who likes that fragrance? Or tobacco vanille, or whatever you want. But it still had some depth to it. It was still unique, but it just wasn't as interesting. Another issue is that people uh, said that it was similar to Shalimar, so it's, which is a, a women's perfume by Guerlain. So it had this sort of effeminate quality that some men just didn't really appreciate. Um, I kind of get the similarity to Shamalar like a, the, the, a bit, but I don't really see it to be completely honest. So I was actually working in store when this first came out and on my first sniff I didn't imagine that I'd be holding it in my hand as something that I'd actually bought. So I understood the problems with it, but I really, really do like this and I'm going to explain why. So would you like this? Um, a fellow YouTuber by the name of Charles Gross, I think that's his name, said that this smells very graveyard. And I thought that was a really perfect description of this. This is a very um, brooding and dark and very gothic type of fragrance, but yet it's still very wearable and quite casual. It's a very, it's perfect for the winter in terms of scent, not necessarily uh, performance, but again, we'll get into that. But if you're looking for something quite, um, quite brooding, quite mysterious, actually, this is a perfect fit for you. If, um, if, you're, a, if you're a boss, if you're a head of a company uh, and you wanna have a very authoritative uh, type of fragrance, this is definitely it, and, and not just that, but as a personal thing, there's a, I have a friend who, who watches these and he's been very supportive. Um, I took him out fragrance shopping in September, I bought him Lode Say, and he kept saying, I want something kind of darker, I want something a bit more mysterious. I would personally recommend this to you, my friend, you know who you are. Um, yeah, this is something that I think that you'd like, so I'll bring it down, down south and let you smell it. Uh, and finally, in the realms of smell, if you are a big fan of patchouli, definitely if you're a fan of like Lindsay de Golan or Extreme, this, uh, patchouli and rose together, and iris. If you like those kind of musky florals, then, oh my goodness, you, you are allowed to blind buy this if you go into that. Presentation, bottle and the box. So people say to me, George, why are you so bothered about presentation? Why is it such a big deal? And the answer is because this is fashion. You're in a fashion industry. You want things to look good. So for this, this is an exquisite presentation. This is more like a fashion accessory by Tom Ford rather than the perfume bottle. It's, it, it, it goes with exactly what this smells like. Okay, this looks how it's supposed to look with the smell that's inside. It's really, really great, very detailed. That is uh, ribs, it's brilliant, TF, but wait, there's more. Look at that, T and F. Oh my goodness, it's brilliant, it's amazing. Really, really awesome. Um, so yeah, really, really awesome uh, presentation. I freaking love this bottle. I think it's so, so cool and so attractive. This is a 1.7 ounce, by the way, 50 mil, 100 mil. Looks a bit better than this. This looks a bit dinky, but it's really, really great. I, I cannot give this anything less than a 10 out of 10 for presentation. So let's get to the best bit, the scent itself. Now, uh, Noir has been sprayed on here about, about an hour ago. So it's, uh, it's very, very different from the opening, actually. Very, very different, but I'll, of course, get into that. So, here we go. Let's uh, let's waste a spray, as another fragrance reviewer used to say. So, now, you look at the note breakdown, and this is not what you think, or this is not ex what you'd expect from it. So, you look at the note breakdown, and it looks super floral. You've got things like patchouli, rose, geraniums in there, iris, and it looks pretty floral, but it's it's not. It's very, very brooding. So, okay, you've got the patchouli uh, at the beginning, and then 
underneath that, at the very bottom, you've got the violet. Okay, you've got this violet kind of thing. So you've got patchouli, violet, and in between, you've got an array of things going on. You've got the rose, which is really sit, which is sat very firmly, but you've also got vanilla and you've got amber. Tiny bit of citrus and there's a few kind of, there's some spices, but it's not spicy. What it smells of, what it smells is, first of all, this is powdery and that's probably because of the iris, but it smells, I thought it was gonna, I, I, I won't say smoky, but it's not. It's very foggy. <laughs> it's a very foggy texture to this smell. Um, yeah, that's the only way that I could really explain the nature of this fragrance. It is a foggy, uh, patchouli fragrance that smells musky. But it does actually smell musky and also musty. So that's the first. That's the first stage. There are three stages. The first two are kind of similar. The second stage, the vanilla actually really comes up, and the vanilla starts really integrating very, very well with the patchouli notes. So you've got essentially vanilla and patchouli with the rose on the current. At that point, um, a bit of geranium comes in. I thought it was gardenia, actually. I thought at the second stage that there was gardenia because it has that sort of watery kind of floral quality, you know, like freshly cut um, flowers in a vase uh, in water. There has a bit of that kind of smell, and usually that's gardenia that creates that kind of scent, but it's not, and I think it's the geranium. So, a bit more floral, but again, the vanilla is really centering everything. So, you've got to think, main players, vanilla, patchouli, and that's about an hour in. The last stage, I'm going to call the millisim dry down, because it really, really reminds me of Creed's dry downs. Okay, by the end of this scent, you're, it's starting to smell like the end of Millisimi Bidial, or Silver Mountain Water, um, or Himalaya. It's really that kind of like, ambergris. Kind of, there's no ambergris listed here, but it smells like an ambergris floral dry down, and it's very, very different from all the muskiness at the beginning. So that's really interesting and, and not expected, uh, to be completely honest. It doesn't really take away from it, it's not bad, but it's just a bit unexpected. So. There you go, that is Tom Ford's Noir. The florals in this fragrance create a real air of sophistication, um, along with all of the musty, musky, dark, gothic, graveyard scent that's going on. This is a really, really well-designed, incredible fragrance that really tells a story throughout. One of the biggest things about this fragrance is it's got huge personality. And what I mean by that is that if you're wearing this and you enter a room or you meet somebody for the first time, they will have a genuine impression, a genuine image in their mind of what they're like, of what you're like because of this fragrance. And when a fragrance does that, that is top tier uh, fragrance artistry. So overall scent, you better believe this is a 10 out of 10. However, there is a twist in the tail for this one and that is performance performance is bad. It's really quite weak, especially for a Tom Ford, it's really quite disappointing. Um, so, projection, you get a nice, good, healthy scent cloud for the duration of the fragrance, but the last two hours of the fragrance, it, it really comes in. It's not completely a skin scent, but, you know, it's not that great. It's it's nowhere near beast mode. Doesn't push out. It's uh it's not good. But it's longevity that really is going to make this fragrance uh, lose marks. Longevity is on me, really bad, and I'm talking five to six hours maximum, and that's really depressing. I've heard. Uh, I've seen on Fragrantica on base notes that people have actually had a bit more success with that, but on my skin, it just does not last, it doesn't stick around. So, uh, projection, I'm gonna give a 7 out of 10, but longevity, I'm, I'm gonna have to punish this fragrance and I'm gonna give it a 5 out of 10, because it's just, it's not good. Tom Ford's Noir is a classic gothic tale in a fragrance bottle. It tells an incredible story and is really, really going to give you quite an impression when people smell this on you. The performance will let it down, but the scent does save it with the marks. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna try and be fair with this one, and I'm gonna give overall Tom Ford's Noir an 8 out of 10. 
if you have a matching personality to this, if you are quite withdrawn, if you are quite mysterious, this is going to be the love of your life, I swear to you. Right then, well, hope you enjoyed this, uh, this fragrance review. Uh, I'm George Fragrance Press. Like, comment, subscribe, give me feedback, all that good stuff. What do you think of Tom Ford's Noir? But until I see you next time, I'm the Fragrance Press and I'm out. Thank you.